Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself out there. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I use different software products to edit and enhance my images and get them looking the way I want them to look, I guess, is what it comes down to. Um, and today I am in Luminar 4 and I'm also in Sharpen AI by Topaz. So I did a video recently. I'll put a link right there if I remember to do that. But uh, it's not very many videos back. But um, it's a video about Sharpen AI by Topaz Labs. And as the name implies, it's a AI-based sharpening uh, editing tool, software product. And it's really awesome. Uh, and that's really what my video was about. I was like, this, this product's awesome. It was the, really the first time I kind of dove in and started using it. And um, it's, it's powerful. But I had a lot of questions and a lot of comments from people saying, hey, how would you use this in combination with Luminar? That was one question that I got a few times. And another question was, where do you use this in your workflow? Like what step um, would you use this? You know, would you do some stuff and then do this and then be done? Or would you do it first or would you do it like whatever? So um, I kind of was working through workflow and sort of figured out how I would use it. So that's what this video is about. So I've got a photo here. Let me just show you the photo. Here's my base photo. Honestly, it was just something I saw. I just like old kind of spooky poltergeist looking trees. And um, it was a throwaway shot, just to be honest. It wasn't something I ever thought I'd do anything with. It's kind of soft, which is where AI, uh, Sharpen AI comes in, but it's lacking color and blah, 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 which is where Luminar comes in. So I turned it into that. It's much crisper. It's like a real photo um, versus just a throwaway shot. So I'm gonna uh, reset all this stuff and we're gonna start in Luminar, go to Sharpen AI, and then come back to Luminar to wrap it up. Okay, here is my base layer. I did crop it 16 by nine. It had a whole bunch of foreground because I shot this a bit from a distance. So here's kind of my general workflow. I go in and do very basic minor stuff first. This is a JPEG. I shoot raw, but I've got a folder with a lot of JPEGs in it that I've exported from my Luminar library. I keep that folder on my desktop for testing purposes. Somebody always asks me, I shoot raw normally, but I've got photos that I use for tests and experiments in a folder on my desktop. And this happens to be one and I liked it, so I made a video about it. So that's why I'm there. Um, I'm starting by first cooling this off a little bit. So about a negative 25. I'm gonna give it some contrast as well. So like a 24 or so. Highlights are coming down 100. It's just too bright in the sky for me. And shadows are coming up about a 40 or 42. Uh, something about like that. So that's really just, I don't wanna lose visibility into the tree trunk. Uh, let me show you the before uh, and the after. Um, and then the next thing I do is a little bit of AI Enhance. So I'm gonna go about a 23 on AI Accent. And then for uh, Sky Enhancer, I'm gonna do about a 29. Uh, and that kind of acts a little bit like a polarizer. So you can see it kind of darkens the sky a little bit. So there's the before and there's my current state. Let me zoom in and show you what I'm talking about with Sharpen AI. And I'll show you this again in a minute, but that's my tree trunk. The tree is obviously the focal point of the photo, but it's pretty flat. It's kind of soft. It's, it's, you know, it doesn't look that great to be honest. So there's before and there's the after. You know, we've done a little bit, but that's all I've done is just really some very basic edits. And so that's where in the workflow, I kind of say, all right, I'm gonna sharpen this photo because for me, it could use some sharpening. I like the textures in the grass. I like the fence. I definitely like the texture in the tree and the branches. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna say edit plugins and I'm gonna say other, no, I've got it right here. Topaz Sharpen AI. I'm gonna go ahead and launch that and then work through uh, my edits in Sharpen AI. Okay, here we go. I've brought this into Topaz Sharpen AI from Luminar 4. You can see right away, let me show you the original. If you look at the tree trunk, it's definitely a little bit soft, um, really not focused that well. Um, and there it is after. I went ahead and went for auto and I do this a lot. I mean, that's the beauty of Sharpen AI and frankly the AI products that Topaz makes. They work really well, I think, as complements to what you can do in Luminar. Uh, but in this case, the AI, I just kind of let it take over. Um, I went, uh, it automatically defaulted to destabilize mode, which is, you know, honestly, kind of makes sense. I was shooting this handheld. We were like walking across a field and, you know, I had a fairly long lens, so I had it out 
and that's just kind of a recipe for for shakiness or a soft photo I should say I'm kind of twitchy anyway as I've said in previous videos but anyway I went for the auto settings and just let it default it defaulted to stabilize mode and it defaulted to sharpness and noise suppression of the numbers that you see here and one more time just original kind of soft and this one much crisper and that's again I'm drawn to the tree that is the focal point but also just the textures in the tree it just looks so much better so I'm really happy with that I don't have anything else I want to do here so I'm just going to go ahead and say apply and it'll send it back it'll process and it'll take a minute uh, but it'll send it back over to Luminar as its own layer called like Topaz Sharpen AI layer or something like that anyway then we'll do some more edits in Luminar okay we are back in luminar as you can see i've got a topaz sharpen ai layer and let me just zoom in one more time so you can kind of see this here um, there it is sharpened after topaz ai and there it is before so it's a vast difference i, I think it's much improved the great thing about topaz sharpen ai is as it shows here it does a really wonderful job even just using the ai modes the bad thing about it is it makes me want to go pixel peep and look and zoom in significantly on every photo I have. Now I'm like looking at everything and saying, God, I really could sharpen that. It would look so much better. And I've not historically done a whole lot of sharpening. So it's a personal problem, as my dad used to say. Um, anyway, now I want to make some edits. Now you can actually get to the uh, tools or filters, whatever you want to call them, on this layer. I personally prefer to start a new layer and separate those from this sharpen AI layer. So I'm going to say plus and add new adjustment layer. Okay, so I am going to start in the light tool and I've got to look at my notes. Uh, the first thing I do is I add some smart contrast. I do about a 22, 23. Highlights come down a 39-ish, 40, something like that. And shadows are going up about 15 or 16. So something about like that. Just balancing out the light. And that's what this layer is about. This is uh, what I've used, um, what I've called a touch-up layer in previous videos. I'm doing a bit more than touch-up because I'm enhancing color and things like that. But basically, I did my base really simple edits just to kind of start with a balanced photo. I went and sharpened, and now I'm above that on this layer doing my uh, my fun, for lack of a better word. So AI accent's going to be like 32. You can see that really brightens some of the darker parts, especially the foreground. And I like that because that foreground got a lot crisper because of the AI sharpening. And so it's nice to bring up that light there. I'm now popping over to color. I'm gonna do vibrance of about a 20 or so, 21. And I need to go into these advanced settings because what I don't like is a little bit of the grass. So I'm gonna go to yellow. I'm gonna take the saturation down about 10. And I'm gonna go into the green and I'm gonna take the saturation down about 50. So I'm um, pulling that down quite a bit. Something about like that. So I'm just kind of taming that look. Let me show you what it looked like before. You can see there's the before and the after. I use yellow on grass. Even when the grass is green, I will often adjust that yellow uh, slider, I guess you call it, in the color tool as well because that green of grass always has a big yellow component to it. I don't notice it necessarily visually, but um, every time I move the yellow when I'm really trying to fix the green, it has a huge impact. So just something to think about. But I'm done with that. Um, I am going to go over here to Landscape Enhancer. I'm going to get Dehaze and do about a 25. You can see that kind of cuts through a little bit of that cloudiness in the sky, which kind of like gives it a little bit more contrast. And then Golden Hour, I'm going to bump that up because it was a sunset, and I want to bring up some of those warmer tones. I'm going to pop over here, get Mystical, and that's about a 40, 42, 43. So again, just some enhancements here you know, enhancements. Um, just trying to get it looking the way I want it to look. Uh, brilliance and warmth, I'm going to do about a negative 25 or so on the warmth. Just I, I like the blue in the sky, so I'm trying to cool that off even though I added golden hour. I kind of do that a lot. I bounce around with my colors because I'm basically very undecided um, about everything. Uh, so I'm going to go about a 20 on the warmth and about a negative 10 on cool. So basically I'm just amping up the warm uh, warmth and pulling down the cool a little bit. And then I go into one of my favorites, which is color balance. Here I'm gonna focus on the highlights and I'm gonna do about a 21 here. And that's gonna give it a nice little uh, pop of warmth. And I'm gonna do like a negative 10 or so uh, over here on the magenta. Give it a little bit more of that sunset flare. That magenta to me is a sunset color. So I use it a lot on my sunsets. Just kind of what I like to do, just a personal preference. 
Uh, and then for highlights, I'm gonna leave the hue on zero uh, for highlights, but I'm gonna do saturation of about 25, 26. And that is my edit, my friends. So let me show you what this layer did. Let me turn that off. You can see um, it was sharper because of Sharpen AI and a little bit better light distribution because of what I'd done on the base layer, but it was lacking all kinds of punch. It just needed some work. This layer was about giving it some work. I bumped up the colors. I like what I did in the grass because some of these warmer enhancements that I did on the end with a color enhancer, or I should say color balance, and split toning really, I think, helped pop that. So if you look at the grass, fairly flat, kind of greenish, kind of boring, and the sky was a little bit lacking as well, a little bit darker, and this layer gave it some pop, some color. Um, and of course, for me, the big thing, of course, was zooming in on that um, this here and just checking out what the tree trunk looks like. Let me uh, show you one more time the before and after. So there's before and after. You can see it, just a massive difference thanks to Sharpen AI. So that's a, an example of workflow, how I would use Sharpen AI in combination with Luminar. I basically took my base photo, did a couple of minor edits just to kind of balance the light, get started, you know, kind of get started. So just a couple of things. Then I went to the plugin to Sharpen AI, did the sharpening. The other great thing about it, by the way, um, it sharpens really well, as you saw, but if you look at the sky, it's not noisy. It didn't, um, I used to, in the old days, I used to have uh, like Photoshop or Photoshop elements like eight or 10 years ago, and I'd make an HDR, and then I'd go over there and do this unsharp mask. Some of you, maybe all of you know what I'm talking about, and it would just crank up the detail but it wasn't intelligent. This is way before the days of AI. Nobody knew what AI was back then. Uh, but like the whole photo would be crunchy. That Sharpen AI does a great job. The sky is smooth. It's just beautiful, I think. And yet the stuff that I want to be crispy, which is the tree and um, the, uh, the foreground. Uh, and by the way, let me get over here as well. Um, even this stuff looks a whole lot better. Let me show you the before and after. Let me do that one more time. Softer, much better. So uh, that combination I think is very powerful powerful. That's how I use Sharpen AI, and that's the workflow example that I have for you. I've got some more stuff I'm going to do, both with Luminar, of course, also with Sharpen AI, and some other Topaz products. So come back soon, and thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. I hope this help helps answers some of the questions I got, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care of yourselves, uh, and I'll see you later. Adios.